Seoul, South Korea, where modernity bows to tradition. A bedecked bride peeping from within the palanquin. Could this be a scene from modern Korea? Palaces and temples, part of modern Korea? This is a journey to Seoul, capital of South Korea. Seoul hosted Soccer World Cup 2002 and Pusan, also in South Korea, is poised to host the Asian Games soon. Seoul epitomizes Korea and can be considered its soul. Seoul retains its old world charm alongside the modern infrastructure and amenities. its Buddhist soul despite years of Chinese domination stressing Confucianism. Buddhism came to Korea via China and the two coexisted for a while with each borrowing from the other. Modern Korea is increasingly Christian, yet it has a distinct culture of its own present in every Korean you meet on the street. Despite devastating invasions by the Japanese and the Manchus who tried to wipe out all traces of it. Investments in Korean energy and enterprise shine forth in high-rise buildings, excellent roads and subways. Modern Korean art, which is sleek and striking, greets you in the form of sculpture and reliefs to break the monotony of concrete. Huge monitors placed at strategic places advertise Korean products, most of which are already household names internationally. the largest producer of computer chips with nearly 70% broadband penetration among its people. One would think that bookshops would not be very prominent, but this sprawling bookshop tells a different story. The War Memorial of Seoul traces the history of battles in Korea. It is also a full-fledged museum which has ongoing exhibitions to attract a regular stream of visitors. The mural on the wall is an exhibit on the Vietnam War. The National Museum and Folk Museum document Korean life through the centuries with the help of lifelike exhibits and a virtual interpretation center. There are interactive games for children which include giant jigsaw puzzles. The huge bell forged in 1468 was struck daily at dawn and dusk. This bell, now retired, adorns the compound of the National Museum. The seven-story stupa with eight bodhisattva guardians called asuras strike a chord. An Indian visiting Seoul is able to connect immediately as there are many similarities in mythology and tradition. If you want a taste of traditional Korean life, as authentic and rustic as it can get, drive 41 kilometers south of Seoul to the Korean folk village. This is a working, living village. 
the Koreans wandering around the village wearing traditional dress actually live here. The 500-year-old life of Chosun dynasty is reenacted in a cozy, wide basin with dense forests and a clear stream nearby. The peasants, farmers and civil officials' housing styles from all over the country have been constructed with authentic materials. The traditional wedding in house number nine, enacted for the benefit of tourists and young impressionable minds from Korea, is always well attended. School children are there in large numbers. The bridegroom bows to his ancestors before entering the wedded state, while the coy bride is brought out by her attendants. ceremonies and the prayers offered in Hangul remind you of the havens conducted in Sanskrit. The language might be foreign, but the body language of the bride, groom and relatives look very familiar to an Asian. The bride's journey to her in-laws begins in a palanquin accompanied by festivities. The folk village is also an ideal site for shooting a historical for Arirang TV. Watching villagers make paper by the ancient and non-polluting method is fascinating. So are the food stores with traditional food items on display. Masks have great significance in Korean art and these masks of various moods beckon you from the shop. of forest produce like bamboo strainers, the artisan working on metal or rocks with skillful hands, sites which transport you to obscure Indian villages. Back on the bus to Seoul, the sights and sounds of modern Korea beckon. Autumn months see Koreans out till late in the night. Food stalls with tempting displays beckon at every corner. Sanchon Theatre Restaurant, run by a Buddhist monk, is the only one in Seoul offering strictly vegetarian fare. Shopping malls on the subway are also open till late into the night. Bannies and puppies tied with ribbons await buyers at the entrance to the subway. Pukansan National Park. It is hard to find an overweight Korean. How do the sedentary office goers a soul keep trim? The secret, it seems, is as much in the nutritive food habits as in the Korean love for the outdoors. Passion for hiking lures thousands to the mountain each weekend. Young and old alike trek in the nearby mountain ranges 
which also offer a spiritual asylum away from the crowded metropolis. On the city's outskirts is Bukansan, which was designated a national park in 1983. Its total area is 78 square kilometers. Bukansan, which is 836 meters, is the highest peak in the area. The park offers multi-pitch climbing, the rugged granite face for rock climbers, well laid out trails of various levels of difficulty for the free climbers. The walls of the mountain fortress rebuilt in the 16th century were destroyed once again during the Korean War. Out of the 14 gates, two have since been reconstructed. An enlightened Buddhist monk called Dosian Goksa is credited with carving this Bodhisattva statue out of stone. The temple at the edge of a cliff surrounded by pine trees suddenly comes into view after you have climbed halfway through. The park area provides an excellent habitat for a variety of flora and fauna. Well thought out environmental and educational messages greet you at strategic places. Hikers' huts and camping sites are there along the trails where one can stop for a drink of rice wine along with kimchi or pickled cabbage and sugary bread and a tasty soup of noodles. The temple at Dosionsa is alive with worshippers' wish lists and lotus lantern decorations hung there on Buddha's birthday. Dosi Anguksa, who built this temple, had a thorough knowledge of Buddhism and astronomy and decided to build the temple where the water is clean and the mountain is beautiful. He foresaw the gradual fading of Buddhism in the coming years but believed in Buddhism's spiritual renaissance. One has reached the top of the mountain, the white granite peak and the temple with stone-carved Buddha. The effect of this elegant combination adds to the sense of peace and calm all around. The presiding Buddha figure envelopes the mountain and its climbers with a raw spirituality devoid of religious bindings. The colors of autumn have just begun to announce their arrival and the temple looks serene and ageless through the autumn leaves. Royal Palaces of Seoul. The Royal Palace compounds of Seoul are amongst the best places to gain an appreciation for the aesthetic of old Korea, especially its architecture, landscaping and use of geomantic feng shui principles. The bracket work in the eaves of the buildings with its psychedelic decoration catches the eye immediately. In major palaces, one is limited to exterior views, except for the royal audience halls. Unfortunately, most of the buildings were raised or dismantled and moved during the Japanese occupation. The finest examples of Korean ceramics, calligraphy, paintings and furniture were carted off to Japan, where they remain to this day mostly hidden away in private collections. The resultant austerity of the palaces bring out the elegance of Korean architecture. Containing hundreds of structures of various types. Grids of lanes and alleyways. 
and small parks with formal gardens that used to function as little cities within the city. The P1 secret garden is in the back of the palace grounds. The four seasons have been built into this garden. For winter, the evergreen. For spring, the azalea and the cherry. For summer, water lilies. And for the fall, the persimmon. Its 32 hectare grounds contain ponds and pavilions, ancient gnarled trees. There is even one resembling a dragon. On Saturdays and Sundays, you can take in the spectacle of the changing of the Royal Guard, a reenactment held at the main gate of the Changdok Palace. The ceremony is accompanied by the Chosun Dynasty military band, dressed in brilliant yellow and white, playing various traditional wind and percussion instruments. A troop of guards parading down the main street with the huge drum does not amuse the passers-by, who are accustomed to this close proximity of tradition with modernity in their daily lives. Incheon Incheon is Seoul's major seaport and home to mega corporations such as the Daewoo Motor Company. China is just a ferry ride away from this port. As you enter Walmido, the peninsula on the northwest side of the Incheon Harbor, fish and vegetable markets greet you. But this is really a trendy place, with Korea's longest underground malls filled with electronics, chocolates, ginseng, and other mementos of Korea. Dozens of islands not far from Incheon. The nearest of them is Chakyakdo. Heavily forested with peonies or chakyak and pines. a small hotel with private eating huts. The right place to relax for an overworked executive during the weekends. The ferry journey is delightful. Young girls busy themselves playing with small crabs collected from the beaches. setting sun reflected in the Yellow Sea pays tribute to the tremendous natural beauty of Korea. Korea, images of the friendly, helpful, 
and fun-loving Korean float before you. Language Barrier If you understand the language of mutual respect, cheerfulness, and innocence, is certain to delight you.